Hello and welcome to my next Bitstrips video tutorial. This will be the first of a three part, part series entitled Taking Control of Your Bitstrips in which I will go over the different controls in the comic builder. Alrighty, before I begin let us go down here. You want to make sure you check out under Bitstrips you will see a tab for help. If you click on that, that will bring you to the Bitstrips wiki page in which they have some information on the different builders and how to use bit strips. So you can go to like the Super Comic Builder and it'll have different tips on what to each button does and how to use it. Okay. So you got all those different options there. Okay. Now definitely want to check that out and they will be adding more to that soon. So keep your eye on that. Now the first thing you want to do before you go creating any strips is you want to go to your settings. Click on settings up on the top right, right above your avatar's picture. Scroll down and we're going to click where it says other options. It'll say beta builders. And it says use the latest beta builders. And you want to make sure that is checked because that will have the most up-to-date stuff as well as when they add new props or if they add new effects, new additions to the character builder, anything like that and you want to make sure that's checked so you make sure you get all the updates that are included with it. Get the most out of your things as well as it make sure when you edit a strip the text bubbles are in the same place and the characters load faster. So now we are going to go to create a comic. Alright, we are in creating a comic. Now I'm going to start off by going over the tabs up top. Up top you will see that you have four tabs you have layout, you have art library, you have text bubbles, and you have controls. Now the first tab we're going to go over is the layout. With this you can change the number of panels that are in a strip. So for example, let's say you want it to be six panels, you can just click number six and it'll make it six even panels. If you want it to be eight panels, you can click the basic ones. They have the basic ones here that are eight, three, and one panel. And that whatever you do, put in here, that'll make it an even number of panels. So like if you click 10, yeah, it can't do 10. You can do 8, any single digit number you can do. Now like let's say for example, you have this many panels, 4 panels on the top, 4 panels on the bottom, but you want 5 panels up top. Well, you can also go down here, and you will see 3 buttons on the bottom. The first button, you can remove a panel. And what that'll do is that'll join the panels together. So if you click on a panel, it'll join it with the panel to the left of it. So like if I click on the X there, it'll join those two panels together as one panel. So wherever you click, it's going to join it with the one to the left of it. Now if I click plus, like let's say I click this here and I click plus, it'll add a panel. If I click on this one, I click plus again, it'll split that into two panels. So on and so forth. Um, so that you that way you can add panels and then you see I have two rows. If you click on the third one, it either adds or deletes the row. So if you click it right now, it'll delete that row because you can only have two rows. So it will delete that row. If I click it again, it'll add a row and it'll make it even with the row above it. So that is how you can change the panels there as well as when you click on the sides of the panels, you can change the width of them. So let's make it one panel for right now. And then you can change the width of it if you want, as wide as you want. And you can also click on the bottom and you can drag it and make it as short or as tall as you want. So you just go until that turns into a single line arrow. Alright, now uh, you will see past the panel numbers you have the colors you can change. You can change the border of the strip. If you click on that, let's say we want to make it red around the edge, there you go. You got a red edge. Let's say you want to make it eat the box click in the box. You want to make sure the box has a blue highlight around it. That means that you've clicked in the box. If you haven't clicked in the box, you won't be able to change the color of the sky. That's why. So, if you're wondering why it's not changing, make sure you've clicked in the box. And then you can change it to green or whatever color you want. Let's change it to blue. And you will see right here, there's an arrow connecting the box that says sky and the box that says ground. There's an arrow connecting them to. Now if you click on that arrow, it will turn into two separate arrows. 
Once it does that, that means you can change the color of the sky and the ground separately. So like I can change the ground here to green now, if I wanted to. So now I have a blue sky and a green grass below it. And now if you have a multi-panel strip, like you have three panels here, okay, you can color all panels, like I can, if I change it to blue here, changes all panels to blue. But if I click off of it, I can change each panel individually. I can change this one to purple, you know, whatever I want to do. So, once you click off that box, it changes it, or you can change them all to the same one, whatever you want to do. We'll change this back to one panel. Okay. Alright. So that is the first tab under your layout. Alright. Then we have our art library. With our art library, you have five tabs up top. Characters, scenes, props, furniture, and effects. Now, you're only going to have all five tabs on the first category to the left, which is bit strips basics. When you click on that, you will see those five tabs. Under the characters and bit strips basics, you have the basic characters they give you to use in any strip, which are generic ones, which if you need extras for a strip or something, you can just put those in there. Or if you want to make a strip about Buddy or whatever. Now, if you want to do s scenes, it gives you basic scenes you can use. You can have a beach, whatever you want. Let's say you want to be on the beach. There you go. Then you have props. You know, you can have whatever prop you want. Let's say we want to have a chicken leg. Let's put a chicken leg in there, okay? And you have furniture. Let's put a bush in there. And we have effects. You can put an uh, exclamation mark in there. Well, let's add a character, too. Let's put Miss Blondie in here. Okay, so there we have our basic categories there. Now, then you also have to the left, you will see a drop scroll down box in which you have different categories. You have famous, which is famous characters, like politicians, actors, things like that, that people have made. And then we have featured, which are ones that have been featured in editor's picks that honestly they haven't really changed since the beginning but these are some of the featured ones you're yeah, honestly not going to use that too much and then we have my stuff which has the characters you've created as well as the scenes you've created so you can use all your own stuff in there okay and then you have my friends which has whatever avatar each of your friends that you have in your friends list is using at the moment. That'll have their avatar in there, so you can use them in a strip. And if you click on my friend's stuff, that'll have 28 pages of the most recent characters your friends have made. So it's not going to have every single one they've made, but it'll have the most recent ones. And then if you click on scenes, it'll have the most recent scenes that your friends have made that they've made public. If they made them private, you won't be able to see it. But if they made it public, you will. So you've got everything that they've made there. Okay. And then if you click on my favorites, this will have basically 50 pages of every character that you've used. See, I've got 50 pages of them here. It takes forever to scroll through them. But this comes in handy because every time you use a character, it stores it there. So it makes it easier so you don't have to go looking for them sometimes. You know, Once you use it, it's in there. So you don't have to go try to remember wh who used it, where it was at, you know. Like if it was a friend's character that's not in your friend's stuff anymore, you can go to your favorites and it's right there. So it makes it a little easier for you to find stuff that way. Okay, and now it's important to remember when you put that scene in here, we can still do th change the color of the sky. Like let's say I want to make it a green sky. And then we can change the color of the ground, say we want to make it blue. I can make it blue, I can make it yellow, I can make it red. Whatever I want to do, that all still applies to the sky and the ground. So no matter what scene you put in there, that'll still change. Okay, so we did that. Let's change the color to red, border color to red. All right, so that goes over the first two tabs. That's been about 10 minutes. So I'm going to finish this one here, and then the next one I'll go over the next two tabs, which are the text bubbles and the controls, which control each object you lay in. And then in the third one, I'll go over all the controls on the bottom. All right, so until the next one, I will see you guys next time on Taking Control of Your Bitch Strips Part 2. And take care.